Everyday Canadians are struggling. They're losing their homes. They're unable to feed their families. They're lining up in record numbers at food banks, fighting with overdue bills, the ever-increasing taxation and cost of living. And what exactly is the Liberal Party of Canada doing? Well, they're letting insiders line their own pockets, of course. This is a staggering level of incompetence, woeful ignorance, and corruption that has resulted in SDTC improperly distributing almost $150 million in taxpayer dollars just in the past few years and abusing dozens of people that have only tried to talk about the truth. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini to bring you a report that makes the SNC, Lavalin, and sponsorship scandals of the Trudeau regime look like small potatoes, where a whistleblower recently testified in the Canadian Parliament making scathing allegations involving Trudeau's $1 billion green slush fund. Before we get into the names of some of those involved, have a listen to this scathing testimony that incriminates high-level officials, conflicts of interest, and money squandering. The seed fund, ecosystem fund, and scale-up fund were all found to be ineligible due to multiple violations of the contribution agreement, significant deviations from the due diligence process, and conflict of interest breaches by board members and executives. This finding encompasses nearly 200 companies that all received over $80 million, all of which was improperly funded using taxpayer money. The two COVID payments in 2020 and 2021 were also given to the full portfolio of companies and totaled almost 40 million and were also deemed to be ineligible as the use of these funds was not effectively tracked. And several board members in that instance also violated conflict of interest by approving almost $4 million to themselves to over a dozen companies where they all hold significant ownership or executive positions. Next, have a listen to this clip from May of 2023, which is the voice of Chief Financial Officer of Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada, Doug McConaughey. Based on the, the very preliminary uh, findings of the, of the fact-finding exercise is that there is smoke around the vast majority of the allegations. We, we, we said we would believe you. Now, we, now there's enough evidence to say that we really do believe you. Um, and that means that there is that, that the government is going to have to take action. There's a lot of sloppiness and laziness. There is some outright incompetence. Um, and, uh, you know, the situation is just kind of untenable at this point. I think the, the minister is going to flip out when he hears the stuff. And, you know, he's going to want he's going to want an extreme reaction, like shut it all down. Oh, it's it's unlikely that certain members of the board or the entire board uh, and, and, and executive are going to be able to continue to serve. Like they've kind of lost the confidence. So it'll be, so really the discussion will be the, the mechanisms for, um, for, for getting, getting them out. First of all, the, we need to have control of the board and in order to actually, um, like have a plurality of votes if we want to go after the executive. So that's like, that's the stuff we're kind of the machinations are figuring out right now. But, the report um, implicates the board in terrible ways, you know, um, like by not following process, by um, not following the COI regime, uh, by not uh, being uh, prudent fiduciaries. Like it's just a board failure altogether. Indeed, all roads lead back to SDTC, that's Sustainable Development Technology Canada. The executive team is comprised of CEO Zihad Rahim, VP of Finance Cheryl Yuri, VP of Ecosystems Zoe Kulbik, VP of People and Technology Stephen Engel, and VP of Investments Brian Scott. The board of directors includes Judith Athade, Jill Earthy, Brenda Kenny, Carl Landry, Ellen McGregor, Guy May, Michael Denham, Leo DeBever, Sarah Cavanaugh, Stephen Kukucha, Aaron Mahoney, Guy Marasti, and Joe Mark Ziri. There were two people and members tasked with operating independently of the board, and they were put in place to protect stakeholders, namely the Canadian public at large, Kathleen Sendel and Ed Vandenberg, who failed quite clearly in this duty. And all of this has caused Conservative MP Michael Barrett to ask, where is 
the money. These liberals and that minister was satisfied with their cover-up report and wanted the board chair and their CEO to implement the recommendations at this corrupt organization. But now with the Auditor General investigating and the Ethics Commissioner investigating, two liberal appointees, the board chair and the CEO, have resigned in disgrace. There's $1 billion on the line, and we know that up to $150 million has been embezzled. Canadians can't afford this Prime Minister after eight years of him and his NDP Liberal government. We want to know, it's very easy, who got rich. Will the Liberals finally be held accountable for their continued corruption and flagrant disregard for ethics? Where exactly is the RCMP? Perhaps they're too occupied with diversity, tolerance, and inclusivity training? Apparently, this is only the tip of yet another conflict of interest riddled iceberg, so stay tuned. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's regime has a track record of ethics violations that continue to be swept under the rug. But Canadians are increasingly becoming aware of this incompetence and hypocrisy. In fact, we've launched a petition to highlight all of it at TrudeauMustResign.com. While the Prime Minister regularly engages in theatrical virtue signaling in attempts to showcase his own apparent good character and moral superiority of his government's policy positions, it's clear that this emperor has no clothes. Sign our petition and follow our reports at TrudeauMustResign.com.